Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Tony with RCHelp.com. In today's video, we're going to be setting the toe and the camber on this truck. Now, up here in this video, whenever we put these arms together, we should have already had this thing set up for the camber. With these balls screwed into the A-arm, both uh, top and bottom, this thing should have negative two degrees of camber. So what we're going to be using to check the camber is, well, a camber gauge. <laughs> Now, we're also going to be checking the toe in here on the front and on the rear. Since this truck has turnbuckles here in the rear, you can set the rear toe in to whatever you want. So there are going to be some changes from the other videos on how we do this. Number one, we're not going to be using the towel. The towel, it's just, I don't know, it, it's not level, you know, it, it's a towel. So we're going to be removing the towel and unfortunately I have three lights right here. You're going to see reflections on my desk. And the second thing... I'm not going to be cleaning these wheels out. I will kind of brush out the dirt, but I'm not going to be washing them because the foam in these tires is already starting to degrade. I mean, that right there is just nothing but air, and it should be foam. If we look back here in the back, okay, that tire is not a very good example. <laughs> but if we look right here, those are little air holes, and this tire is the exact same way. All four of these tires are like this. I don't want to get any more water in these to where it's going to break that foam down even more. So I want to keep the foam exactly like it is. So we're just going to run with this for now. Where the hexes go on all of them is clean. So we're going to get good readings out of this. And along with them nice dirty wheels and tires, we're going to be putting on brand new lock nuts. These things are cheap. Might as well replace them. So without further ado, let's go ahead, get this towel out from under here, get the tires put on, and let's go ahead and get this thing set up. All right, so there's our nice clean desk, and there's our truck. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these old nuts off. All right, for anybody that has never put on wheels and tires before, really simple. You just push them on. So there's the right rear. We'll go ahead, grab one of our brand new nuts, and screw it on. These are just 8 millimeter or 15 sixteenths. You don't need to go crazy tight once it stops stop you don't need to torque these things down you're just you're going to damage stuff get these nuts out of the way go ahead grab the other tire throw it on you may have to grab the drive shaft and spin the tire to get it to seat into those hexes go ahead and throw the nut on this side and then i'm going to do the exact same for the front all right, with that done, one way you can check to make sure you're not too tight, just spin your tires. It should spin nice and free. There shouldn't be any binding. Go ahead, flip it around. We're gonna check the rear. Perfect. The rear's a little bit tighter. I'm not sure why, but it ain't nothing that that engine can't overcome. All right, guys, so... <laughs> had to do a little rework on this uh, i don't know if you'll be able to see it but where these turnbuckles actually connect out here on the uh, uh, bell cranks i think they're called i can't remember off the top of my head but where they connected there were on top and not on bottom i went ahead put them on bottom didn't figure i need to show that on video and now whenever we push down as you can see we are not getting massive toe in and toe out so Suspension geometry, very important. And that bumper is not straight. Why is that bumper not straight? It's gotta be straight. <laughs> All right, so with that, the very first thing that we need to do before we can actually check camber, before we can check toe in, because it's going to change. You can see the camber as I push down is actually going in. So it's getting more negative camber. And the reason it does that is because whenever you turn, you want that tire to stay almost straight up and down so you get maximum contact when this truck is leaning into a turn. But before we do any of that, we have to set the right height. And I know you guys aren't going to be able to see it with the overhead, but the back is actually just a hair too low. The front is too high. That makes absolutely no sense. There are I have none of these little spacers in this truck that didn't have any on it whenever I got it. They were in the toolbox, but it did not have any on this truck. So to lower the front end, we actually have to move the shocks. To raise the back end, all we gotta do is put spacers in here and push these springs down, adding more preload and bringing that back end up. 
the way I do it is first you will press down on the entire truck and then let it come up you can drop it you can let it come up on its own you can let it come up slow fast it doesn't matter it's going to come up to almost the same spot and right here i need to lower this front end down oh here in the center probably about a half inch so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all four of these shocks on the bottom down here on the uh, lower a arm and i'm going to move them out to the outside hole now this is going to do two things one it's going to soften this front end Two, it's going to turn better. It's going to bite more whenever you turn. And three, it's going to lower this truck down. So I'm going to move all four of these and then we'll continue. All right, guys, so let me show you exactly what I'm doing. That way, there's no questions about it. Whenever we put this truck back together, this is the hole we put the shocks in. What we're going to do is we're going to put them here on the outside. Now, I'm going to do this on all four of them. And if that doesn't help it, if it doesn't lower it enough, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these shocks here and only on the front, I'm going to lean them in. We're going to see what that does. Whenever you can't get something low enough, it kind of becomes a pain in the butt. <laughs> but, I mean, I could go with softer springs and stuff like that, but we're not here to buy, you know, springs and get everything perfect. This is a bashing truck. So, <laughs> back to taking bolts out and putting bolts back in. All right, just got done with the front. Go ahead and push it down, let it come up, and it still needs to go down. So we're going to have to move the upper shocks in. <laughs> Sometimes, man. All right, now that we've got those, as you can see here, I've got them moved in. And if I put it here in the center, you can see these are still in the middle, and these are on the far inside. So go ahead and push it down. Actually, we'll get the wheels straight. Then we'll push it down. And it could actually still use to go down a little bit more. These back ones are a royal pain in the butt to get to. But apparently, that's what we're going to have to do. So to make it easier on myself, I'm just going to go ahead and unbolt the shock tower from the bulkheads. And uh, <laughs> that way we can lean this thing forward. And we can get to those back shocks. All right, got the last bolt here. These screw heads are pretty much all almost stripped out. So my little Chinese screwdriver that is bent and doesn't really want to bite. And as you can see, we have come free <laughs> with a thunk. All right, so now that that has come off, I can lean these forward and I can get to these bolts a lot easier. Just like that, straight in. All right, now that we got them moved all to the inside, <laughs> I did cheat and use my drill, but we need to pick the chassis back up, get that lined up, and go ahead and get the top bolts back in, and then we can get the bottom ones put in. Now that sucks. This top bolt is completely stripped out. That is not good. So now that we push it down, <laughs> it actually still needs to go down about another quarter inch. The only way we can lower this anymore is by cutting the springs or by buying softer springs. Neither one of which I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it down. I'm going to let it come up. I'm going to look at where this is. And then we're going to spin it around, push it down. And that's where I'm going to set the back end as well. So the back end needs to come up. Oh, half inch, three quarter of an inch. And to do that, we have these guys. Now, I only have one really thick one. I have a few of these, which are kind of thick. So two, three, I actually do have four of those. Five actually. And then the rest are really thin. That one and that one match. They're kind of thick. I think that one matches it. And whenever I put these on, I try to put the same amount on each one. That way there's not more stress on one shock than the other. So the thick one, we're not even going to use. These really thin ones, we are not fine tuning it that much. These, maybe. These, almost definitely. So... To put these on, all you do is grab that little shock retainer. This shock is leaking a little bit. 
I'm not sure why. Push that one down and snap that on. Get the Allen driver out the way. Go ahead, pull this one down. Snap that one on, snap that one on, thank you. And pull this one down and snap that one on. All right, push it down, let it come up. I'm calling that good. It is just above, uh, straight across level. So yeah, we're good. <laughs> so I got really lucky being able to use the ones that we had an abundance of to actually raise that back end up. So now what I want to do, get those tires straight, push it down, let it come up, and just kind of look at it. And it looks kind of level. The back might actually still be just a hair low. But I'd rather have it low than high because with the back end low and the front end high, that's basically going to add rear traction and take away a little bit of front. Now, we're going to take and make a bunch of noise grab our camber adjustment and I'm going to bring this truck over to where you guys can pretty much see straight down. I have this set on two degrees. It was set on three and a half. Again, I don't know why, but now it's set on two degrees. And as you can see, we are pretty much right there. We're not looking for dead set, you know, two and a quarter degree or anything like that. The sidewalls on these tires can <laughs> they can vary between a degree or two. Just make sure the tire is leaning in and not leaning out because whenever you go through a turn, you want that tire to stand up straight. That way you have maximum contact on the ground. As you can see there, kind of, this one's right at two as well. But right in the center of the tire, you just want to look at it from the side and make sure that the face of this gauge goes kind of in contact with the sidewall. So, we'll go ahead and flip it around. Remember, always push it down before you start testing these things. I got some screwdrivers in the way. Slide this over. Now on the front here, make sure your tires are straight. Push it down, let it come up. Check it. That one's really close. And then same thing on this one. Press it down, let it come up. And that looks pretty good. All right, so with that done, what we wanna do is get kind of a preliminary measurement on where the toe end is. So we're gonna go ahead and press it down. We're gonna grab our toe end gauge, and let me see if I can push that back to where you guys can actually see exactly what I'm doing. So we'll grab our toe end gauge, we'll spread it apart, and the way I'm going to go, let me get a pokey bit, I'm going to go from right here all the way over to right here. Because those ribs are in the same spot all the way around the tire, I don't have to try to get right on this seam. I can just go here and then here, and that'll give me a measurement that I can repeat front to back. Now whenever you do this, you want to put it on the back first because that's going to be your widest spot. You want to put it right there on that rib and then come over here and line this one up on the rib. I can't see it because if I could see it, I'd be blocking the view from you guys. So I'm going to loosen this nut. I'm basically doing this by feel just, just so you guys can see it. Make sure you're like right in the middle of the tire. So we got it right there. Push it in just a hair, a little bit more, and somewhere about right there is where we need to be. So I'll pull that out, lock this thing down, and I'll push it back so you guys can see what I'm doing here right on the front. Press it down, and now we're going to put it on the rib over here, and then we're going to look here, and we are at about one degree of toe in so that's not a lot i would rather have it you know towed in a little bit more but as you can see <laughs> there's quite a bit of play in this so i'm going to leave it at one degree and just see how it feels 
So now, once you have the front done, you wanna do the exact same to the rear. Again, I like about three degrees. So we'll put it on here and just kind of measure it. Actually, I'm doing that one wrong. We gotta do it from the back. All right, go ahead and loosen this up. Put it on a rib, put it on a rib. That looks good. Then, press it down. Put it on a rib right over here. And again, we're right at about one degree. So we got lucky on this one. We don't have to make any suspension changes. By screwing the balls all the way into the A-arm, so we have negative two degrees of camber, and with the setup that was on it, we have about a degree of toe in on the rear and about a degree of toe in on the front. The only thing we didn't check, and I can't find my straight edge to check it, and that is to take, put a straight edge across that tire, just like that, tow it out, and then bring it back in until it touches both of these faces on this tire. You will have to move this one. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get this tire perfectly in line with this front tire. Do that on both sides. Once you get that done, take your toe in gauge, measure here, measure in the front, see where you're at. You should be at zero degrees whenever you do that. Then turn your turnbuckles, move that tire in until you get eh, two to three degrees of toe in. So other than playing with the shocks in the front and putting these spacers here in the back to level this thing out, there really wasn't that much going on. <laughs> Everything was set up because we took the time to set the balls up in here and the previous owner didn't mess with these links and they were exactly where they were supposed to be. I think I put these A-arms on upside down or on the wrong side front to back. That, yeah, that could have been me, but they do need to be on the bottom and not on the top where they were. Otherwise, you get massive toe-in issues as it's moving up and down. So with that, uh, I think it's about time to get this tank wet. What do you guys think? It's been a long time coming to uh, finally put fuel on this thing, but I think that day's coming real quick. Guys, as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Questions, comments, or suggestions, post them in the comment section below. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.